Hello, I am Erdem from Eurovision. In this video, we will learn LTI capacitors. L stands for linear. Our, our capacitors will be linear capacitors, and they will be time invariant. Uh, so, our, the the capacitance will will not change with respect to time. All right, let's start. Uh, we we interpret capacitors in schematics like this: two flat bars, and if you have a polarized capacitor you will have a one flat and one curved end and the cur curved end will represent the uh, negative polarity flat end will represent the uh, positive polarity the basic equation that defines the capacitors is this Q equals capacitance charge equals capacitance times voltage across it we know that time derivative of the charge is current and to relate current current through capacitor to voltage across capacitor we can take uh, we can take the derivative of the both sides here left hand side we have dq over dt which is also equal to current through uh, capacitor and on the right hand side we have uh, derivative of c times vc since c is just a constant capacitance, capacitance is constant uh, they are time invariant remember uh, we can take derivative of the voltage then on the right hand side we have c times dvc over dt then these two paths are equal to each other, right? So, if you send this C to the uh, denominator of the IC and this DT to the near IC and take integral of both sides from minus infinity to a time T, what you get is total voltage of the, of the capacitor. In some cases, the initial, the initial voltage is given, uh, like here, Vc of T0 is given and this voltage uh, this voltage includes all voltage from minus infinity to a time t0 then uh, you will take integral from t0 to t to find actual voltage of uh, time t all right this is the uh, most use useful formula in questions other than this one uh, you will mostly use this one in questions power of the capacitor is very straightforward you will just simply uh, multiply voltage across it by current through that and as you know uh, time integral of power is just energy and if you want to find energy of capacitor between time t0 and t uh, you will integral from t0 to t v c i c and t t and what you know about i c is that that is c times d v c C times dVc over dt, right? And if you write this for IC in here, dt is obviously cancel out, and uh, you have C times Vc, and you will you will integrate this with respect to Vc. And this integral very straightforward, since your bounds are t0 and t, the uh, result of the integral is simply this, which is uh, a very famous one half C times V squared. All right. Another property of capacitors is continuity property. Let's read the statement. If the current remains bounded in a time interval TA and TB between TA and TB, then voltage across capacitor is a continuous function in that interval. This is very handy. Uh, this is a very handy property. We will use this. We'll make use of this property a lot in the question. So please learn this. Uh, I have I have written I have drawn uh, some graphs to make this statement clear. Uh, as you know, all sources other than impulsive sources are called bounded sources. And if the current is not a delta source, sorry, is not a delta valued, so then if it's not delta valued, it's called bounded naturally. If the current is remained bounded, then voltage across capacitor is always continuous. So, here we have a current source uh, and supplying these currents. And here uh, we have a uh, voltage graph, a uh, voltage across capacitor. Uh, in this interval, we have, a constant, we have a constant current and our voltage is like this. And we have a jump in the uh, current value. 
this does not mean um, this does not mean that current is unbounded. It's bounded. It has a certain value, right? Then uh, our capa our voltage value across capacitor will not have a jump. It will be continuous as uh, drawn here. And it goes like this, and it has a decrease again, decrease in this time. But uh, this does not mean value is unbounded. Jump doesn't require unboundedness. Bounded and unbounded are different things. And still our, our voltage is uh, continuous as you can see. Uh, let me uh, complete the t interval. We come up here and that is this point is what is here. We have here a delta source. Delta sources are unbounded. They have infinitely high amplitude. And this causes a jump in the voltage ac uh, in the voltage across capacitor, which is drawn here. Look here; it's not continuous. And uh, after this data source for a very little time interval, we have a DC current source again. And in that interval, we have a continued continuity in the voltage of the capacitor. All right. Let's look at initial condition models. Uh, Suppose you have a capacitor with initial voltage V0. You can replace this with a capacitor and a voltage source equivalently. You can uh, make this transformation directly without concerning about anything. But after this replacement, your capacitor will have zero initial voltage. And your uh, voltage, voltage source will supply V0 times U, U of T minus T0. The purpose of the step source is, uh, is deleting effect of voltage source just before uh, the initial time. Our initial time is T0. So if you put a step source here, you're deleting, you're removing the supply of power of this source just before and whole before the time equals T0. Another model is uh, replacing this one with a current source and a, uh, and a capacitor. Your capacitor at this time is uh, like this, zero initial voltage. And your current will supply C times V0 times, this is capacitance, V0 times and a delta. Alright? Remember, delta sources are unbounded sources. Conservation of charge principle. In some questions, you will see that you will have two or three or whatever capacitors you have. And at a time instance, you will switch, you will turn off the switch. All right? And after uh, turning off the switch, you're, you will be asked to find a voltage across capacitor or some output of the capacitor. And to find that output, you will not be able to apply conservation of energy. Because while turning uh, the switch off, you may have sparks going out to the surrounding or some uh, energy losses. Because of that, you will need to apply conservation of charge principle. You will equate charge in the first situation to the charge in the second situation. What you have, how much charge you have in the first situation, remember charge, this C times V. Uh, in the first capacitor, we have uh, C1 times Vc1 amount of charge. And in the second capacitor, we have C2 times Vc2 amount of charge. And if you sum this up, you can find total charge in, in the first case. Then, after turning off the switch, uh, you have two parallel capacitors. By KVL, their voltages must be equal. And this equality happens uh, just after you close the switch. So, V prime C1 is equal to V prime C2 by KVL. And uh, since they are parallel, they are connected within, uh, between the same nodes, you can, uh, you can reduce them into one single capacitor with capacitance C1 and C1 plus C2. And if you multiply capacitance with the voltage, you can find total charge, which is C1 plus C2 times V prime C1. You will equate this and you will find ask output of the capacitor. Uh, let's move on to the behavior under DC source of a capacitor. After very long time under DC source, capacitor fills up with maximum number of charge. And since 
it it included maximum number of charge no current flow flows through capacitor then if no current flows through capacitor it acts it acts like an open circuit and this is also an important property uh, please learn this one I'm not talking about a little time interval I'm talking a long time interval after a very long time under DC source all right and the last thing is behavior under impulsive source uh, not that impulsive sources act on a very little time interval very very little like here it acts on very little time interval all right and capacitor acts capacitors act like a short short circuit in that moment when impulsive source acts on on the circuit all right these are important properties and these also are important properties indeed this video is very important for you to grasp uh, capacitor problems and first first order circuit problems second order circuit problems or whatever and that's all for this video thanks for watching